Hello and welcome back to The Crime Reel. For today's true crime narration, we shall be looking at two unsolved murders dating back to the 1980s that took place in England. Both of these cases are still being investigated 40 years later and may have been committed by the same individual. On Tuesday, the 12th of January, 1982, the Guardian newspaper reported that three separate attacks on shopkeepers in Coventry, Bedfordshire and Suffolk had a lot of similarities and police were considering whether they were all the work of the same person. The previous year, in April 1981, Susan Sheem of St George Road in Coventry was attacked in the shop that she owned. She sustained severe cuts to her head, but thankfully recovered from her injuries. The injuries appeared to have been inflicted by a sharp, heavy object, but I've been unable to find any additional information regarding this crime. The Guardian article also mentioned two other attacks. The first of these occurred in August 1981. Carol Morgan was 36 years old. She lived with her husband of four years and her two children from her first marriage, 14-year-old Dean and 12-year-old Jane. The family had moved to Finch Crescent in Leighton Buzzard, Bedfordshire, 18 months earlier and ran a small shop known as Morgan's Store and lived in the flat above. On Thursday the 13th of August 1981, Carol's husband decided to take the two children to the cinema in Luton, which was about a half an hour drive from where they lived. They left home at around 5pm, leaving Carol alone at the store. When they returned home at approximately 10.30pm that evening, they discovered Carol's body in the storeroom of their shop. She had been repeatedly struck with a sharp heavy object in an extremely vicious attack. The crime scene was very messy, with blood everywhere, but the forensic team managed to identify two fingerprints on the lid of a chest freezer. Investigators discovered that around £500 and nearly 3,000 cigarettes were missing from the store and assumed that the motive was robbery. Extensive house-to-house -house inquiries followed and an eyewitness recalled seeing a young man, approximately 17 to 20 years old, at around 10 past 7 that evening. The man had been carrying two plastic bags and was described as being around 5 foot 6 inches in height. He had neat light brown hair and was wearing either blue jeans and a putty coloured jacket or a blue denim jacket with putty coloured trousers. The man was seen getting into either a Vauxhall or Ford Cortina estate car but despite a nationwide search for the vehicle the police were unable to locate it amongst the thousands of similar models in the country at that time. The following month, in September 1981, eight witnesses who may have seen the killer's face were brought to Leighton Buzzard Police Station to work with a forensic hypnotist. The information obtained was passed to the detectives working on the case. Hypnotism in relation to crime was a controversial technique, however it was not being used in the hope of gathering evidence, it was simply the hope that this could result in more leads. A reward of £5,000 was offered by a local businessman and despite a number of arrests being made at the time of the incident, no charges were ever brought. Early the following year, on the 8th or 9th of January 1982, another attack took place. 76-year-old divorcee Dora Pratt lived in Ipswich, about 100 miles from where Carol had lived. Dora lived alone in her shop on the corner of Bulstrode Road and Fellor Street. It's spelled F-E-L-A-W. On the night of 8th of January, there had been heavy snowfall, resulting in the planned FA Cup fixture between Ipswich Town and Manchester United the following day being cancelled. Undoubtedly, this would have meant there were a lot of visitors in the area at that time. At 5am on the morning of Saturday the 9th of January, Dora was found by police constable Anthony Spry. She was unconscious on the floor of her home above her store and Anthony had forced his way into the shop after becoming concerned for Dora's welfare. Again, the crime scene was very messy and around £200 had been stolen. Dora was lying in a pool of blood, having sustained three blows to her head. She was rushed to Cambridge Hospital where, on the 13th of January, she regained consciousness. 
She gave the police a description of her attacker, a young man aged about 20, stockily built with longish hair and silver rimmed spectacles. A major investigation followed, with nearly 5,000 interviews conducted. The police managed to trace all of the customers who had visited the shop on the 8th of January and rule them out of the inquiry, all except the man wearing the silver rimmed spectacles. Dora remained in hospital for several weeks before being discharged. She was too terrified to go back to her home and as a result sold her shop. She went to live with her nephew about 30 miles away in the town of Dis, D-I-S-S, -S, Norfolk. On the 6th of July 1982, Dora died as a result of the injuries she had sustained in the attack. Referring back to the Guardian newspaper report of the 12th of January 1982, it mentioned that all three of the women suffered wounds which were consistent with being struck repeatedly with a sickle and that there were many similarities between the crimes. However, the murder weapon had not been found and it could not be categorically stated if these crimes were committed by the same person. Both Carol and Dora's murders remain unsolved to this day. Dora's case is regularly reviewed by Suffolk Police in the hope that progress made in forensic science or information from new witnesses who now feel able to come forward which will help bring Dora's killer to justice. On the Suffolk Police website it states under the title of current progress that a review of the forensic evidence has been carried out and the findings are subject of analysis to help provide direction to take the case forward. Carol's murder has also been the subject of multiple reviews, in this case by the Bedfordshire Police. Over the years fingerprints have continued to be checked against those found on the freezer whenever people of the applicable age are entered into the system. On the 27th of November 2019, the police announced that they had arrested a 69 year old man and a 70 year old woman from Brighton in connection with Carol's murder. The police stated that they would be carrying out additional work both at Carol's shop and in Brighton. The following day, both of these suspects were released on police bail. Then, on 30th of June 2021, a 70 year old man and 72 year old woman from Brighton were arrested on suspicion of Carol's murder and conspiracy to murder. They have been released under investigation while inquiries continue. On the 13th of August 2021, the 40th anniversary of Carol's murder, the police reissued their appeal for information to assist their inquiries. Detective Chief Inspector Carl Foster from the Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire and Hertfordshire Major Crime Unit issued the following statement. Today we are asking for the public's help in tracing several people who we believe may have information which could prove crucial to our case. We are keen to seek and speak to Diane Porter and Suzanne Williams who lived in the Lynn Slade area around 1981. It is important to note that neither woman are suspected of any involvement in the matter, but they may be able to help to assist us with this investigation. Although we have made every effort to locate them, it is possible Diane and Suzanne may well have married, spell their names differently, or moved out of the area since 1981. If you think you can help us trace either of these women, or have any details about them, then please do contact us. A third person we would like to locate is a Sophia Hedges, who in the years since Carol's death, we also believe has had the surnames MacDonald and Pick. We understand that Sophia is likely to have emigrated to Canada and any information whatsoever would help us to get in touch with her. We can only hope that 40 years after these brutal murders, the perpetrator or perpetrators finally get the punishment which they deserve. That concludes today's case. Personally, I live in hope that one day they will get justice. Please add any comments down below. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst. I mentioned the market town of Dis earlier, and it's a Saxon word meaning ditch or dyke. Can't touch Dis. Goodbye.